your town, your station, your voice. Afternoons on Callum FM. Listen online at callum.fm. It's the Andy Snowden Radio Show. Show. 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 When you're strange, when you're strange. James Pearson and the Ronnie Scott's All Stars People Are Strangers. Now then, uh, Ronnie Scott was a British jazz tenor saxophonist and jazz club owner. And in 1957, he co-founded the Ronnie Scott's Notorious Jazz Club in London, Soho, and has since become one of the world's most popular jazz clubs. Now, the story of Ronnie Scott is on the road and we'll stop off at Will, uh, Wrexham's William Aston Hall on Thursday, the 2nd of February, featuring world-class live jazz from the Ronnie Scott All-Stars, led by artistic director James Pearson. And I am so pleased to say that he joins us live from London right now. And uh, James, it's wonderful to have you on the stage in screen show my friend thanks ever so much for joining us and um i suppose i've had to start off by asking you about the uh, the last couple of years the last uh, couple of years with covid how was it uh, how was it in the uh, the nightclub industry how how was it for uh, uh, musicians as a whole well we didn't as far as uh, musical performances no the whole world of performance of music went um took a dramatic pause until they started doing the web streaming. And we started doing that from Ronnie Scott's about six months after. Yeah, so it was a bit of a shock, it has to be said. Yes, absolutely. And then we did loads of concerts to uh, no audiences, but they were being streamed. So hundreds of people were watching them on television. It seemed like everyone sort of had to kind of think outside the box somewhat. And we all kind of, we were all learning. Every day was a school day, that's for sure. That's right. Everybody was doing streams and various experiments of that nature. So it was very nice when eventually we did have audiences back. We were able to realise how important it was to have an audience to put a, to put a concert on. And it was almost quite uh, it was almost quite emotional when when it all got back to normal. It was. It absolutely was. When we did our first concert back at Ronnie's, exactly that's how I felt. But you're uh, you're back, thank goodness. Uh, Ronnie Scott's All Stars, the Ronnie Scott story. It's on the road at the moment. We'll talk about that in a moment, if that's all right with you, um, yeah. because you've had um, a career that is uh, quite. Uh, I mean, it's it's a head turner, that's for sure. And we share something in common. I noticed this morning that we both graduated from the Guildhall School. That's uh, that's something. That's right. <laughs> quite a few quite a few years ago, in my case. But um, yeah, absolutely. Well, I walked past it the other day. Well, I graduated in 94. Um, was you before oh, that? Yeah, so you were literally a year after me, because I was 93. I went 1989 to 1993. Right. And I graduated in 1992, but then I did another course, so advanced solo studies. Okay. So and what did you play? I, I was... Uh, no, I was uh, on the drama course. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. So you were there the same... I, just, you might, I, was, in a, I was in a couple of productions of, with Ken... Ken Ray, was that his name? Yeah. Um, Pippi Longstock and Joseph Fiennes was in it. And yeah. So that was the year I was did the some of the drama productions. And Ewan McGregor was there. And, uh, of course, um, Damien Lewis was there as well. Absolutely, yeah. So well, it, was, it was quite fun because there wasn't much interaction, was there, between the music department and the drama department, apart from the occasional production. But I seem to remember, uh, just wandering around the, around the place at lunchtime, there was always concerts or you could hear music everywhere it was um, yeah. it's quite incredible in that, really in that foyer it was right next to the music hall and there was always rehearsals or something something going on so was yours a, a, a jazz course or a classical course how, how was it for you no i did i did the three-year graduate classical course and then an advanced solo classical course i did do some of the jazz course because on one of the years they didn't have a jazz pianist so i got to do you know all the fun parts of it Right. But I was already playing jazz as well. And I sort of ended up playing jazz in the third year because I got a job to um, pay some, you know, pay maintenance in a restaurant playing jazz at lunchtime in Farringdon. Wonderful. But you've you've toured the world with uh, your jazz trio. And um, do you find that uh, jazz is... Uh, d does it have a, a different reaction from people at different parts of the world? Or is it pretty much the same? 
No, different reaction, definitely. Um, and, you know, in, in Brazil, it's quite, they get very excited. I mean, in Brazil and in certain places like that in America, not, not in America, but in South America areas, Argentina, they absolutely love to dance. As soon as you play anything that's got a vague rhythm, they'll be up. <laughs> and it also makes you play differently. Um, I quite liked it, actually. We did. We played in New Orleans, um, and it was more like a pop gig. You know, that as soon as they were dancing, and it actually made you play differently because you saw how much people were really physically enjoying themselves. It was quite interesting. Yeah. So yeah, and then also the other thing that's different about playing all over the world is the way people clap. It starts off okay, and then it just goes, gets louder and louder and louder and wilder. And uh, in Brazil, they end up doing a sort of mono clap. It goes on and on and on. So it's quite interesting. In America, they just whoopy and, and they go. Yeah. They love being surprised in America. So you learn a lot from the different audiences. I can imagine because I think if, if anybody goes to New Orleans, they they definitely try and visit a, a, a jazz club. And I think it's the same for Ronnie Scotts in a way that uh, now I think people they like to go to Ronnie Scotts to, to almost just to say they've been there. Oh yeah, and many people, especially on Friday and Saturdays. They, they don't actually, with respect to them, but they don't actually know who they're going to see. Yeah. Because they just want to be in Ronnie Scott's. Uh, yeah. But I used, I used to work over the road from uh, Ronnie Scott's just by Soho, and um, and it's a bizarre uh, cool. thing because you it's almost like Buckingham Palace where you can't help having a quick look at it every time you walk past it. It's one of them kind of places. Yeah, you do. You absolutely do. Yeah. It's quite funny because you know you get the London tour, tourist guides and chats of take people around to do so they all stand outside Ronnie Scott's and say, you know, Miles Davis, Jimi Hendrix played it. They never actually mention any of the jazz. Yeah. But they, they talk about the famous rock stars that have played there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. And um, jazz music yeah, is uh but for me, I think it, it, it's um, it, it seems to be one of those genres that's original every time. Is that is that is that fair that uh, it never you never seem to see the same song played twice? Is that right? That in technically is true in the sense that the melody is, that, that everybody plays at the beginning will be the same melody, but it's going to be played differently anyway. And then the the, then the next section, which is the improvised section, is will be whatever the player wants to play. So there's always the sense of familiarity about it but at the same time there is originality but it has to be in relation to the melody you know if you're playing yeah. three blind mice then everybody knows how it goes uh -huh. so you can sort of relate it to it if you see what i mean I so I oh, it's still they can still hear it a bit definitely because i i um just before lockdown you uh, you recorded your album swing the swing the club uh, which was recorded live at ronnie scott's and um i was listening to it last night and um and i thought i i, I know this tune and it was uh, it was lady madonna and i thought oh right so anything i presume That's can right. be given given the jazz treatment yeah and also ronnie scott played on the original track of lady madonna in 1968 all right. If you listen to it next time, there's a there's a saxophone solo in the middle when it comes to the bridge, and that's Ronnie Scott playing on it. That 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 leads us perfectly on to uh, what you're doing at the moment. You're 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 touring the country with the Ronnie Scott story. Um, tell us about it. How, how does it work? This. So it literally is the story of the club since before it started, actually, and how they got the brainwave to put the club together. It was Ronnie Scott and uh, a few other British musicians at the time all used to go over to New York and work there and uh, worked on the QE, it wasn't called the QE, it was called the QE Mary. And then uh, he came back, got the idea for the club, and then it's, sort of, it's about the early days of how it was when it was in Gerald Street, which is now in Chinatown. Then uh, about some of the performances that have happened and some of the other things off, off the stage, like when the Cranes tried to take over the place and Jimi Hendrix performed there. And the Who... Yeah, so we show the whole thing with, with, with screens, showing film. At the end, there's a film of Ella Fitzgerald at the club. Um, we join in with that. So it's, it's a fun sort of nice history. It's definitely um, something for people that do or don't like jazz because it's very entertaining in that sense, seeing the screens, pictures of Miles Davis and Buddy Rich and people like that, Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> but incredibly, I think... It, it it sounds like one of those shows where you, you you'll just not you'll not go and just be entertained, but you'll actually you'll actually learn something. <laughs> yeah, I mean, most people come back. A lot of people have been to Ronnie Scott's, as you know, and they always want to tell you about who they're to visit to or who they saw. Yeah, um, and it's a bit like that, and you know, it always has been. 
So it brings back memories and it also, you know, other people say, oh, I really want to go there or I want to, you know, look it up a bit more. Yeah. Oh, 100%. And and I think I, I think you're absolutely right that um, it doesn't matter who they go and see. Um, I, I when I went, I, I don't know I don't know who I saw, but I know, I know for a fact I had a a great night, and I told everybody <laughs> that had a pulse that I'd been, you know. Well, that's right, and it was great when we were younger. It's changed a bit, but there was that lean-in shelf, and you used to be able to get in for three quid if what? you were a student, yeah. which was which was perfectly affordable at the time. Um, it's, times have changed a bit, but they still try and have a good young crowd going there, especially in the late night sets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And as I said earlier, I mean, you've had one hell of a career and you've worked with some of the greatest in the business. I'll, I'll list just a few. Dame Cleo Lane, Petula Clark, Josh Stone, Robbie Williams, yeah. the late, great Jeff there. Beck and Paul McCartney. And next week, uh, you'll be coming to Wrexham for the, uh, the William Aston Hall. You're, uh, you've scaled the mountain and conquered, my friend. <laughs> that, that's right, exactly. Well, I've never, I don't mind. If, if, as long as the person you play with is decent or the venue you play is lovely, it doesn't matter. It's all about playing music Absolutely. Um, at, the end, at the end of the day. Fantastic. Well, we look, we look forward to welcoming you. It's the, it's the 2nd of February at the William Aston Hall in Wrexham. Sounds like it's going to be a cracker. We're looking forward to it. <laughs> Cheers, buddy. You take care of yourself. Thanks, James. Yeah, see you soon. Thanks all, very much. All the best, mate. Thanks. Bye. Bye. James Pearson, the Ronnie Scott's All-Stars with the Ronnie Scott's Story, playing Wrexham's William Aston Hall on Thursday this week, the 2nd of February. Kicks off at 7.30, tickets just £15, and uh, the box office number up at Theatre Cluid for the William Aston Hall, 01352 344101. Uh, that's 01352 344101. Go on. Support your local theatres, ladies and gentlemen. They won't be there forever if you don't. From the heart of your community. Afternoons, this is Callum FM. FM.